Hello, everybody. It is the end of GDC week. It's Saturday morning, March 19th. You're listening to Colin and Curtis in the morning. Colin, how are you doing? GDC? What are you talking about? It's March Madness. It's, it is March it's Madness. It's mayhem, mayhem in March. It's... We've had upsets. We've had mm-hmm. not upsets. <laughs> We've had... We've had... Uh, buzzer scores, beaters, buzzer beaters, we have points, double overtime on a score games, board. teams advancing, teams not advancing. We've had tons of Charles Barkley but and Samuel you know Jackson else? commercials. You know what else we've had, Colin? What have we had? We've had a lot of news, Ooh. and we've had r- rumors and speculation and all sorts of crazy things popping up. Yes, we have. Such as like a price tag for the PlayStation VR. Yes. Uh, PlayStation View's gone nationwide. There's talks of a PlayStation 4.5. Bloodborne's getting a tabletop card game. What? This is mass hysteria. What? Or you might call it March Madness. Colin, let's get the show going. We'll start off with some pretty normal, nothing too crazy yet, news. Skylar and Plux, Adventure on Clover Island, was announced for PS4 this week. There's a trailer. Uh, Colin, it looks really similar to Ratchet and Clank. Definitely looks very much inspired. Uh, it's a kind of a 2D platformer, very colorful. 3D platformer. Uh, 3D platformer, sorry. Yeah. 3D platformer, very colorful. Looks very, very much um, inspired by Ratchet and Clank. Maybe not the gun element of it. Yeah. Um, but definitely like color-wise, even like the, the kind of the animal yeah, character. Yeah. The side. There was kick. a there was a grapple hook mm-hmm. element that looked very similar. Uh, I think this game looks pretty cool. Yeah, I think so too. Um. We haven't had a ton of 3D platformers like on mm. on the PlayStation 4. Um, little, like like the one that kind of like reminded me that like oh yeah like that was the game was that Legend of K game. I was like you know so you got Legend of K you're getting this one. Um, I think it's I think it's cool that we're getting more 3D platformers. Like we got Ukulele mm-hmm. coming. Uh, we do have Ratchet and Clank coming soon. Yep, Knack Two. Um, all sorts of great stuff. <laughs> Uh, so the next the next uh, thing on our list here, we're there's not much to say here, but I felt like we should talk about it because it's for a game that has basically been silent for a year for a few years now, mm-hmm. um, and that is Rhyme. Yep. So Rhyme, if you remember, was revealed at GDC something like something like three years ago. I thought it and was the. You might be right. Or not GDC, not GDC, Gamescom, sorry. Uh, Gamescom, yeah. Gamescom, yes. Um, something around like three or so years ago at yep. this point. And it was kind of a, the thing that took a lot of people by storm because it looked very similar to like a Team Eco game, yeah, but it right. had like a Wind Waker yep. art style. Yep. And it just looked really, really interesting, but it's something that kind of just vanished and disappeared and really wasn't showing up at any shows or press conferences or really anything. We didn't have any news on it. Mm-hmm. So earlier this week, uh, Wednesday, I think, the uh, Te- Tequila Works, which is the developer, mm-hmm. uh, they uh, posted on their Twitter that they had reacquired the rights to r- the IP rights to Rhyme from Sony, who would have been publishing this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now from there, things get a little hazy as far as what we know and what we don't know we've had a little too much tequila and a little too much tequila uh there there had been rumors uh in the past that this game had seen some troubled development and specifically when this tweet went out there was a it's a big thread on neogaf on it people you know talking about what it like what okay that's interesting does that mean this game's going to be multi-platform now you know what's going on with this game can we get an update and specifically there is a we'll call it a rumor you know uh there had been some reports of specifically some of the trouble going on with this game uh again we can't really say too much about it just because we don't know for sure and maybe we won't know uh but it does seem that some things have been going on with rhyme that maybe isn't great maybe there's some trouble uh brewing there maybe the game has had some issues and that is that would certainly explain why we haven't seen or heard anything about it yep in a few years um this was a game i was personally very excited about Mm -hmm. but even even if the things we're hearing aren't true uh just the tweet itself about them reacquiring the rights and whatever would cost sony to drop it uh is a little concerning i think yeah so hopefully that game will still make it out someday but i'm 
I'm not uh I'm not optimistic about it, unfortunately. Yeah, it was kind of a kind of a you know, little uh little punch to the gut for, for people that really mm-hmm. wanna or really looking for this game. But hey, at least we still have the last guardian. Twenty seventeen. Hey, they re- they reconfirmed 2016 this week. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the next thing on 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 the news docket here, uh, Bloodborne is yeah, getting a tabletop card game. This is uh, essentially all we know about it. Um, but I guess the guy the guy who's uh doing the game design for this has has done some other like video game adaptations for two two board games. I believe XCOM is one mm-hmm. that was recently done, and those seem to be pretty well liked. Uh, I'm interested to see how this turns out. Uh, I guess this is going to be based mostly on the Chalice Dungeons and oh, Bloodborne. Okay. Uh, so this could be pretty interesting. Um, I'll probably, depending on the price, I guess. I know these kind of designer board games can be pretty expensive. Yeah. Uh, so I'm interested to check it out at the very least. Mm-hmm. And, and from there, let's move on to um, some more of the meteor topics this week, Colin. First off, I want to give some brief impressions on PlayStation View. Okay. Uh, so PlayStation View is a uh, kind of Sony's kind of TV answer service. to cable services, yeah. where people wanting to like cut cut the cable cord, and maybe it's a bit of a cheaper option, uh, and it's something that you there's some on demand elements of it and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So what's 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 key here is that it this has been around. It's been in some bigger cities, like not very many, but it's been been in some bigger cities around the U.S. Uh, but it went nationwide this week. Now that doesn't include like local TV channels. Um, I imagine the kind of the talks are probably still going on, and that's going to take some time. Yeah. But it does include the the packages they have. It now starts at thirty dollars a month at the cheapest level of the three tiers. I think it's thirty, forty, and fifty five. I believe. Mm-hmm. And the first tier is like fifty five plus channels. Um, they do have some a la carte model uh, yeah. stuff going on where you can add like Showtime. For example, and that's actually interesting because the pricing on the a la carte stuff um, actually ties in PlayStation Plus discounts. Oh, nice! So you get like a few bucks off per month. Um, like Showtime, I think it's like, I think it's like thirteen, but if you're on Plus, it's like eleven or mm-hmm. something like that a month, yeah. which is pretty interesting. Uh, so I tried. There is a seven day free trial that you can try out. So I I've been using it for the past couple nights. Um, first night, it worked really well for five minutes, and then like everything cut out and things weren't loading for about 10 to 15. Uh, that ended up fixing itself and it's been fine since then. I'm not sure. I, I've, I've read that other people have had similar problems, so I'm not too sure what's going on, what the fix would be, but everyone basically said we waited it out and after 10 or so minutes it fixed itself and it hasn't been a problem since. Now, uh, when it's working and it was working really well for me, uh, I felt like the the streaming quality was like really good. Okay. Uh, it was very like at least on the PS4, uh, and this is something that works on PS4, PS3, like the Amazon Fire TV and Fire Stick, uh, Chromecast, some other things. Mm-hmm. On PS4, it's very snappy, very fast. Everything loads very quick. It's it's really it's great. Like I really really like it. Unfortunately, and maybe this kind of coincides with the way that everything is set up in our house. Uh, basically, if someone's like watching Netflix, or if someone was like downloading something, uh, it starts to cripple. Oh, and I imagine there was probably multiple reasons for that. Uh, one of which I'm sure has to do with I'm on a PS4 that's on Wi-Fi, and PlayStation, and at least the PlayStation 4 and Wi-Fi notoriously, the internet speed for whatever reason is much lower than it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you're on Wi-Fi, it's a good deal lower, uh, and that's always been a problem to a point where I feel like one day I need to just get a big Ethernet cable. Uh, but so it works. Basically, my experience is it seems to be working really well. It just unfortunately with our setup, um, it would require us one to buy a few like Amazon Fire Sticks yeah. to get it in every TV, yeah. uh, which wouldn't be a huge deal. I mean, they're forty bucks, so that could add up. We would need like two of them at least, or you could just go buy like. 13, Another PS4, thirteen hundred dollar Sony Bravias, and have it. Oh, I could. In, right? I, yeah. I don't know if that, um, that seems like a thing that they, you know, they'd have. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but it definitely seemed like it was specifically with Netflix. It would like buffer a lot, and that's obviously not what you would want. But mm. like the on-demand stuff, like being able to favorite a channel or like favorite a show, 
and having like 28 days access on the backlog yeah uh, it was really really cool and so i like it a lot it's something i would like to use at some point uh, just for right now it doesn't seem like a viable option unfortunately yeah but i would definitely recommend trying it out like if you're, if you're someone looking to cut cable and stuff like that it definitely is a lot cheaper than you're probably paying uh and i guess depending on your situation like if it's something you're like if you live in a household that everyone's using up internet mm-hmm. that might not be a good option for you yeah yeah. But uh, hopefully it'll get better over time because, like, I mean, like, I feel like it can't be too much different than, like, Netflix's setup. And that's something that I can have multiple – we can have multiple people watching Netflix yeah, true. at once, and it will be fine. Yeah. Um, but Netflix sometimes it feels like magic in mm-hmm. some cir- circumstances. So that's kind of just some quick impressions. I think it's really great, but there are – also, you can't, like, fast-forward – for the on-demand stuff, which is kind of uh, a bummer. Yeah. So you still have, like, the commercials to sit through, but... Yeah, sure. At any rate, Colin, let me ask you a question. Lay it on me. So this is a... We'll call it a rumor. <laughs> okay. Um, this is coming out of Kotaku as of hours ago. Just hours ago. They are reporting that like, at least, like, four separate writers from Kotaku, both the U.S. and U.K. branch, have reportedly heard from multiple different sources and also heard people talking in line at GDC about a PlayStation 4.5. Hmm. Now, specifically, this would, from what they've been told and also, like, a little bit of speculation, this would be um, better hard, like, it's something that would have better hardware included. It would be able to output 4K resolution for games. Okay. So the PlayStation 4 right now cannot put 4K video and photos. Mm-hmm. Uh, it cannot do that for video games. So that would obviously be a, a pretty big uh, improvement there. Yeah. Um, they're not sure if this is something that you would buy to like upgrade your current PS4 or if it would be a separate model. Uh, but supposedly, they have been told this by numerous different developers. Um, Sony has recently started briefing developers about this talking about what it would be apparently they've been having some meetings behind closed doors at gdc this week um and again there was someone from kotaku uk who was standing in line at gdc and overheard developers specifically talking about a playstation 4.5 yeah so my question to you colin knowing as little as we know Mm -hmm. about this we should also include this is not something unique to sony um we have heard rumblings, and yep. we've heard things about Microsoft looking at a similar, something similar, yeah. where they would have a an Xbox you could upgrade. Phil Spencer like a, like made a some better, comments. At a, mm-hmm. He kind of like made a comment and kind of like backtracked it a little bit. Yeah. So it, it at least seems like something like this could be in the works for both companies. Yeah. Would, would you, okay, as knowing as little as we do, what would you think of a new version of the PlayStation 4 that is that has better hardware? Um that would come out from what we know right now like with outputting to 4K or, or better yeah, hardware yeah. and stuff. I I don't see myself needing to go buy this cuz probably like a lot of people we don't have 4K TVs. Mhm. Um, sure. I think, you know, 4K is going to be a thing. I think that's going to be, you know, more mainstream in, like, you know, maybe five, ten years. But yeah. I don't think it's going to be – I don't I think mean, there's going to be that many people running out to go buy a PlayStation 4.5 with mm-hmm. a 4K output and stuff. And it's like – I mean, did the did the article state anything about, like, what it means for better hardware? Like, like do we know, I mean, like, just it's better really, graphics and processing? It's really, it's really, like, speculation at this okay. point. Yeah. Um. um yeah, I wouldn't. I I mean, just again from what we know right now, I I don't see why we would we, why I would upgrade. I think it's an interesting kind of concept because um, like a lot of people always used to say like you know when the PS3 360 cycle ran so long, you could kind of see mm-hmm. the consoles starting to show their age a little sure. bit. Um, so I think like this is kind of an answer to that. Um, so like I, I don't like I I've, I've never been I've never been one to be like oh yeah the 
you know, this will be the last console generation. But something like this does make you think, you know, is this potentially the future? Is this, like, how it's going to go? Where, where instead of maybe these generations will last a lot longer, mm -hmm. at least. And instead of having, you know, a, a new console come out, we'll have, a, like, a stopgap. And that'll allow the console generation to go a few years longer. Yeah. But we'll also get hardware somewhere in between that will kind of help things move along. So they, they're not showing their age as much as they would be. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, like really the most you can say is like very speculative right now. I, It feels like this is a thing that's probably going to happen. Yeah, I believe I, it. It definitely, it definitely feels like this is very probable. It's a matter like... It does. It's unclear, like, is if this is something that is going to be anytime soon. I imagine if they're like just now kind of briefing developers on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine it would be anytime soon. Maybe yeah. like na late next year, at the earliest. Yeah. yeah. Like I wouldn't expect to really hear anything concrete about either of this from Microsoft or Sony's side for a little while. Maybe uh, Microsoft a little sooner, but. I feel like. Go ahead. I feel like we've already seen somebody do this though which uh -huh. which i think you know where N i'm going and the, the company's name is nintendo oh uh, oh i nope that's not oh, where you were going, you were going. Oh, no. oh oh i was going i was with... i was gonna name drop everyone's favorite Se sega. sega oh i wasn't even thinking about that i was mm -hmm. specifically thinking more of the 3ds and the new 3ds um which one of my questions would be... Yeah, yeah. So that was a very recent is, thing. Is there going to be... Is there going to be something where Uncharted 5 comes out and they're, like, only playable on PlayStation 4.5? Or something like that. Like, are, are they going to start making games that work for both? Or are they going to start, you know, making games that, like... Well, there's going to be some games that, you know, you can play on both, but then there's going to be like these really high end games that you can only play on the PlayStation 4.5. Um, uh, I don't, so I don't see, I don't see like... that. But that's, I mean, that's just like a discussion, I guess, that I'm just thinking about. That's where I maybe would start to be concerned about where this would head. Mm -hmm. Is I, I mean, it really, really depends on how it's handled, and it's something that's hard to talk about without knowing full details. My hope is it wouldn't be something that would fragment the user base, right? Yeah. At least too much. Yeah. Um. If it's these consoles are built to mimic PCs, yeah. right? Like they're very like architecture wise, they're pretty similar to PCs, more so than they have been in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's done so to make it kind of easier to develop for. Yeah. So if they follow that model, right, you would, on PC, you know, you have people who have just crazy PCs that they've built that can run everything at the top settings, while other people have to run at lower settings. And so I wonder if maybe, maybe it could be a situation where the PlayStation 4.5 or whatever would be able to, would be your, like, max settings. Mm-hmm. And then the PlayStation Four would be like, would be your lower settings. It would still be, it would still be fine. It would still run those games, but it maybe it wouldn't look as nice. Maybe the frame rate wouldn't be at sixty, yeah, consistently. I don't, I don't know, but my hope is that it wouldn't be. This is exclusive to this new hardware. I'm sure you would maybe run into a few situations like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe with specifically with the VR stuff. Yeah. Because you can imagine that, like, better hardware would help with PlayStation VR, um, at the very least. So, like, who even knows how that would tie into this? Mm -hmm. But, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's so strange. Like, I don't know what, like, when I first saw this headline, I was like, ooh, don't know. But the more I thought about it, the more it's like, well, I mean, that could be handled. And, in a, in a, like, that could be cool. That could be an interesting way to do this, like you have to imagine that consoles are, will probably be different and evolve in different ways. Uh, just the technology is different now than it yeah. was years ago. And like we saw the PlayStation three and Xbox 360 and the Wii and the Wii U to an extent, like we're at a point where we can issue firmware updates and the PlayStation three in 20, 2006 
compared to the PlayStation the PlayStation Three right now is a very very different thing. Yeah, and it's the same with the three sixty. Um, so this would it feels like this would be the next step, and it would be a bigger step than just a firmware update. But you know, depending on the pricing of what it would be, is this something that I could like? I could use to upgrade my current PS4. Or would I need to go out and buy a new one? There are lots of questions. Yeah. But I'm at least open. I'm open to the concept of this. It just really, really depends on how they would handle it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm interested. Uh, I'm de- mm-hmm. I'm I'm definitely. My interest has been has been piqued, as they say. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is it's. It just has. I just have to see what it's going to be first. I mean, like yeah. with a lot of things, uh, and I'm sure there's more than just outputting to 4K and better hardware stuff like that. Oh sure. Um, but who knows? Uh, <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, it's it's such a crazy crazy story and yeah. like and and i think it is it's it's a sign of the times and it makes you think of like well like if this is something that let's say sony and microsoft follow like we know almost nothing about the nx other than crazy speculation and we kind of have a, a decent idea of what that could be and yeah. we'll find out in a couple months but you, you sort of think like maybe the nx is like maybe that's something that could potentially be upgradable over the years like what like what is that even like the nx could be a game changer that could come out and be so radically different yeah and and unique and it likely will be for better or worse it probably will be a very crazy thing that you'll look at at first and instinctually be like i don't know about this nintendo and then who knows where that leads yeah true uh but I don't know. This news is whether it turns out good or not. It's kind of exciting. Uh, it has me even more excited about the NX. Weirdly enough, hmm. because now I now now it's got like it's got the like the, the cogs in the brain, the gears going, and making me think, oh man, if this is going on like with these consoles. Like maybe Nintendo's got something even weirder. Yeah, they probably do. Yeah, and that's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Whether or not, and that's you know to coincide with that crazy, totally fake, uh, picture Controller. that went around. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows yeah. where this could lead? Hopefully, huh. it leads to interesting places. Yeah. But instead of talking about things that will ha- be happening in the years to come, let's talk about something that's going to happen later this year. Colin. Oh boy. It happened. Oh boy. We've been uh, expecting it. We kind of we kind of knew. Yeah. Uh, But last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, March 15th, Sony announced officially the price of the PlayStation VR headset and uh, the month that it would release in. It is coming out this October. Don't know how. I don't think we have a specific date yet. No. We sometime in October. The headset alone. Alone. Will be $400. $399. Now that is the headset. That's the that's the cords you're gonna need. That's the little external uh, power box. Comes with little earbuds. Um, I think. Some little earbuds. Yeah. Pretty much what you would need. Mm-hmm. However, there is one thing it doesn't include, Colin. Oh, oh, you mean, have... oh, you mean I can't just buy a PSVR and just use it right out of the box? Well, well, maybe you can because you have a PlayStation camera. Oh, okay. But I don't. So oh. you need a PlayStation camera. Yeah. I guess for the I I mean so the VR does have a feature where you can like use any game and it will do like a theater mode. Yeah, I'm really for it. I'm, I'm so kind of don't... I'm kind of skeptical about that. Yeah, so um... so I don't I don't think you need a camera for that. Mm-hmm. But you do need a camera for the VR games. Mm-hmm. Uh but don't worry. Sony's got a bundle for you, Colin. So this bundle is going to the pre-orders for it's going to open up next week. This bundle includes the VR headset, all the cords you need for that. Well, that's good. It comes with the PlayStation camera. Mm-hmm. It comes with two PlayStation Move controllers. What's that? You know, the, the PlayStation Move, it's like the Wiimote. There's like a, a magic orb that glows on the end. Huh. Yeah, 
It's, it comes with two of those. Man, it seems like an old old thing that Sony probably never supported back in was, the day. It was speaking of old things, it also comes with a demo disc. Oh. For PlayStation VR games. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I don't think it lists what the demos are, but it's going to come with a demo disc. I think that's really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, just because we don't really get demo disc anymore. Now, is this... But it there's this... one other thing. Yeah. Uh, it comes with PlayStation VR Worlds. Yeah. Which, which is... is uh, Combines five VR experiences into one game. Mm-hmm. So we'll quickly go down these five games. It's almost uh, like the sports champions, I guess. Yeah. Kind of sound like a thing. Yeah. Uh, it comes with the London heist, which puts you straight into a gritty gangland thriller where you get to unleash your inner gangster. Yeah. Which we've seen several times. Which we've, uh, yeah, we've seen demo around. Uh, into the deep, a uh, working title puts you to work as a deep sea salver. It's an emotional underwater roller coaster. As uh, so says PlayStation blog. Yeah. Uh, VR luge mm-hmm. lets you step into the jumpsuit of an illegal street racer, thunder down a beautiful Californian hillside only inches off the ground in a position that only VR can put you in. Lovely. Danger ball <laughs> is a futuristic sport where you must win or die. Use your head oh, to man. strike and spin the ball in this intense fast-paced game because each rival has unique abilities to use against you as you make your way through the tournament to become champion because this game didn't remind any of us of that connect sports game but there's one more okay and this one from the trailer actually looks interesting yeah i think so too uh scavengers odyssey uh in this cab-based sci-fi adventure you play an alien treasure hunter with your agile craft, you can leap huge distances, climb walls, hurl debris with your scavenger beam, and pummel alien critters with your twin pulse cannons. With your unique vehicle, you'll be able to make your way through a dangerous, infested environment of giant ravaged ships, smashing asteroids to reach an ancient and legendary artifact. So, that bundle will be $500. 499 that is available for pre-order starting next week. Interestingly enough, the VR headset alone, that pre-order is not going to be open until later on. Oh, okay, gotcha. And so this bundle is apparently going to be very limited qual- uh, quantities. I think at GameStop, they're saying that you're going to have to put down at least $100 on your pre-order, which uh, is usually around what you would have to do for a console. So that kind of makes sense. Um, but the kind of looking at it, this is a pretty good pretty good deal with that bundle uh especially yeah yeah that's like actually a, like yeah like a 50 or 60 dollar camera you have two move controllers which mm. would, which would be up there mm. and then you're getting uh the vr worlds game uh which which i, I could I, imagine I don't, at least would be 40 yeah i, I don't see it being mm. like a 60 dollar game yeah um which that's, the, that's a pretty good deal and the demo so i i wonder yeah, the demo disc yeah the demo disc is interesting because i wonder if that could mean that we might not actually see those demos on the store Maybe. Hmm. Like, they might be exclusive to that bundle. Yeah. Or at least for, like, a timed yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. let's Well, let's talk about the headset alone at first. Mm-hmm. $400. Um, we had been doing predictions. I think we lowballed it, maybe. You might have gotten closer. I know I lowballed it a bit. Mm-hmm. Colin, what do you think? I think it's about... fair. I think okay. it's a fair yeah. price. Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's too much. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm mildly interested more. Um, the one thing that got me excited when they announced it was the cinematic mode, mm-hmm. um, which now I'm kind of wondering about because it's like recreating you sitting in a theater and then looking up at a screen. So someone mentioned. Because there was someone on Twitter saying, like, why would you do that? And someone had mentioned that, you know, there were probably some people who have smaller TVs, and this would be something that would simulate, like, a larger TV yeah. experience. And so, like, I could see that. I, I would be interested just to try it out, at least, just to see what it would be like. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's, that's, that's probably the biggest thing on all of this, is that we need to try it out first. Yeah. Which I think and is going to be you... a, a massive problem. I will tell you right now, if I walked into like a Best Buy and saw one sitting there, mm-hmm. I'd be tempted, but I wouldn't. And that and that's just like kind of the germaphobe in me. 
who's like, I yeah, don't know who's been true. putting that headset on. True. Like, I don't. Yeah. Like, that's the toughest thing is, like, I'm going to need to try it. But, like, unless, like, I have a close friend who ends up getting one, which I doubt is going to happen. Yeah. I, I, I don't see it. I don't know. Just just get one of those giant bottles, a uh, hand sanitizer, and just I guess, and just soak, rub it all over your face. Soak yourself in it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I know I I specifically I've I've said like I I'm not I don't really have a huge interest right now, mm. at least for now, and it would have to take. I mean, for me, it would have to be like I've I've kind of felt like it would have to be a lot lower for me to jump in kind of blindly on it. Yeah, I I think they're again Sony is is smart and and waited until everyone else had their prices out, and I'm sure they were probably going to be lower either way, but even with the five hundred dollar bundle, they're still ch- the cheapest option, yeah. and at, at the very least, even though it's obviously you're comparing console to PC and it's a it's not a fair comparison at all, at the very least like they have the console with the biggest install base right now mm-hmm. and it's pretty it's a pretty it's like in the 30 millions yeah at this point and it's going to grow especially like by this holiday like by the by the time this vr stuff is out it's going to be bigger and so at the very least they're going to have a really decent size install base and being the lowest and it being a thing of like look you don't have to worry about your your computer settings you don't have to worry about any of that you can just buy it and it's going to work mm-hmm and so if they have like if they have that and it works real well and if they've got a good launch lineup, then I can see this being a attempting offer here. That, again, like you said, that bundle is actually a pretty good deal. Yeah. Like I mean, in comparison, like that's the thing where it's like, like I don't know why you. I mean, unless you have the PlayStation camera already and move controllers, and someone in my position who doesn't, like why would I? spend 400 when i could spend 100 more and actually save some money and get a pretty good start like a starting kit for this i'm kind of in that position though that i I already have a camera and two controllers from from the past so and and in that case it would do probably do you better to not get the bundle yeah my first thought would be like well depending on how much that demo disc or like the demo disc and how much the vr worlds is it's like well i could mm-hmm. just buy the bundle and sell the camera and the other two move controllers <laughs> maybe i can make my yeah. money back maybe yeah so <laughs> i mean is this something that you think you would get this year uh think maybe um I think they've still got to sell me over the next, mm-hmm. you know, however many months, you know, seven months. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm more interested now than I was last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know. I we thought the PlayStation Vita was a great deal until we heard about yeah, we every, until we th- thought about everything else. Like memory well, cards. And, and the and thing about, I mean, the thing about the user Vita accounts. is, if you remember, because like from the point when the because when the Vita price point got announced, even before considering memory cards and everything, mm-hmm. two two forty nine, it was the same price as the three DS. Yeah. And if you remember, the three DS came out at two forty nine. Yep. Um, and it was not doing well. Yep. And about a month and a half after E three that year, when we knew the Vita was going to be the same price that's when the ambassador program came in that's when the 3ds price point dropped yep so even though it was like being praised as like oh this is actually a really good price it's the same as the 3ds so that's kind of crazy on its own in the time from that e3 to when the vita came out then you had well the 3ds is actually a lot cheaper it's got better it's actually got a pretty good lineup of games now Mm -hmm. and then also the vita memory cards and all these things started piling up against it yep um no i i can't really think of unless for some crazy reason the oculus drops in price which i don't think it would by the end of this year Mm -hmm. like this will likely be the cheapest option yeah um it would be interesting because oculus is pretty soon right isn't it like next week that people are going to start receiving those yeah sounds about right but so by the time this comes out we're actually at least going to have like one 
like consumer um version of these there. things out yeah. yeah and so though there will have been some months for people to have actually been playing vr on a regular basis and see how that's been turning out by the time this comes out and that could maybe uh color people's perception of this mm-hmm. i would say for me personally i am like you i'm interested i'm curious i don't know i think the one thing that would stop me because I, I it's so far out now that i could see like oh maybe i'd pre-order and i would just like spend a little bit of money every every like few weeks or something and just let it add up over time mm-hmm. um and that way i'm not like spending 500 at once it's just like oh it's it's like 10 here 10 there um as the months head into october and then by that point i have it paid off however the one thing that would stop me colin is there is another thing potentially coming out this holiday and that is the nx and so for me it's a it would be a matter it's one of those two Hmm. as far as like a big purchase because both of those are likely going to be expensive yeah i would imagine i don't know if the nx would be four to five hundred though that might i don't know about that yeah but i i I, I don't think i would be able to justify both and so i would need to see what that actually is Mm -hmm. and right now having zelda probably on it is a pretty big deal for me yep but vr itself i i don't know i just i you know it's hard to really say without trying it and we've mentioned that before the big thing for me also is that i just don't really feel like there's that many games well there's and there's also that's like uh, i want to play right now i mean to mention kotaku again uh yesterday there was an article that came out from someone who had spent the whole day doing like a bunch of different 30 minute demos for tons of vr games Mm -hmm. and they were like dude by the end of the day i was just done like i had a headache it was not a fun experience and that's yep probably a legitimate concern and maybe that's something that you have to get used to over time i you know who knows yeah but that's like a legitimate reason to be like well i don't i don't know and like i've said before like i don't really know if i want to play a long vr game i just like i don't know like i don't if, if no man's sky had a vr version i don't know if i'd want to spend hours at a time in that yeah i i agree um, yeah and it's like even just i was listening to another podcast that that was bringing up the topic it's like what if like you know you're texting somebody and you're playing a vr game it's like well you're gonna have to take that headset off like numerous times to keep looking at your phone you know stuff like that um which like i don't know like maybe something's like an emergency or, or i mean like yeah, you wouldn't but it's like you can't just casually talk to somebody else and have this headset on um, like it, it feels like it's all or nothing we're like you know we can sit here and you know play whatever and you know talk at the same time we have we have spatial awareness of what's going on around us um and i feel like we made that i don't know how much of it's a joke and how much maybe it's reality about on the podcast a while back i think that, a little bit of both yeah that like you could just if you have the sony headset on and you got the the vr on and all that stuff it's like somebody could just like bust into your house and just take all of your things i don't know something like that and like you would have i think i saw like a little like cartoon of of someone being in vr and like in the background someone's just like stealing a bunch of their stuff yeah and like you joke and obviously like that that is a joke but at the same time it's and there's maybe there's a bit of paranoia in there but Mm -hmm. i think i think there is i think maybe maybe that is a legitimate like concerned more more so of like if you got family or if you live with family or if you know a significant other or something yeah or it's like you don't video games have this stigma like gamers there is a stigma that still exists for many people that gamers are shut-ins and that they don't go outside and that they they kind of live in this fantasy world and that's it and so the vr is something that yeah like the cynical aspect of it is that it's something that you like that yeah they're just gonna live there and they're not going to pay attention to anything and that's probably not going to be the case for the majority of people Mm -hmm. um but it's that's always been my like my paranoia concern is that like i would just put the headset on and lose all awareness and like who knows what's going on two feet away from me you know it's yeah just like the idea of like someone walking up and being like what are you like what what is that thing on your head yeah and maybe I shouldn't worry about that. 
maybe you maybe the, like the life lesson is don't worry about, about what people are saying to yeah. you but i can't help it <laughs> yeah i i, I, I think I'm... though as this becomes more and more real now that it's got a price point and we know when it's coming out around that time mm -hmm. the more real it becomes the more intrigued i get and, and i think that's just a matter of like it's new tech right and so yeah. i'm always like interested in like trying it out i i really really want to try it out i don't know when i'll be able to um it would probably be when it comes out yeah. but i i am really really interested in trying it out and now colin i feel like i can answer your question from a few weeks ago i don't think there's going to be a vr no man's sky Oh, I don't. I I never thought. I didn't. Well, I don't want to say never. I didn't. I, I, I didn't I wouldn't think say, it was gonna be. I wasn't convinced. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I I don't think it's gonna happen. And if it does, it won't be for a long time. I feel like if it does, it won't be launch. Absolutely. No. Yeah. I I don't. Launch. I mean, yeah. I don't think it'll be something specifically like here's our a, like an update where you can now it's like a VR ready and. Yeah. I think they're probably much more concerned about actually making that game, and yeah. getting it done. I agree. And I won't say like I was on either side of the fence beforehand, but yeah, I don't. I don't think it's happening. Yeah, I. I don't. I don't see it. I. I. I don't know. I could see at some point, like maybe next year, like them saying like, mm -hmm. yeah, No Man's Sky, PSVR coming, kind of thing. Yep. Um. Uh. So. I would like to hear if you're listening to this, what your thoughts are on VR is. Either uh, four hundred or five hundred for the bundle. Is that a price point that you're willing to jump in at? Are you willing to? Are you interested in buying a VR headset this year? And which one, if so, is the lowest pricing for? Is the PlayStation VR being the lowest barrier to entry? Is like that something that's a little bit more tantalizing to you, or would you rather get Oculus or Vive or whatever other headset is out there? Yeah. Um, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think of any of the things we talked about on this episode. Before we close, though, well, let's go ahead and make a prediction, Colin. Oh, okay. go ahead. Okay. Well, I was going to mention um, one other thing, I guess, okay. mostly. Um, they had the – that was the kind of the announcement was the Star Wars Battlefront experience. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, does it sound like to you, as it sounded like to me, that it's just going to be like, you can walk around Hoth on playstation vr and like i don't i don't see like this game like you actually you know what, playing though? this game with vr oh no yeah but you know what and this has been i am much more interested in the paranormal activity vr experience than i would ever be yeah for sure. an actual game mm -hmm. i at least at this point i am far more interested in things like that where you can like take a tour of a world in vr yeah. Yeah. If it was like, hey, we've got like ten locations, like famous locations from Star Wars. I'm not even a big Star Wars fan, but it was like, hey, we've got the De the Death Star, we've got Star Killer Base. Yeah. So that's basically yeah. the two same locations. But we, we <laughs> but if we have like ten, like five, seven, like seven, eight, ten different locations that are infamous from all the different Star Wars movies. Mm -hmm. And it was like you can walk around them in VR and see all the like, you know, very detailed environments and, yeah. uh, or like maybe it's they've redone certain scenes from the movies and like yeah you can stand there and watch it and like and then you can like pause it and they like walk around and I don't know like something like that where I can just walk around this environment from a thing yeah uh, it's the same thing like if like the Mars VR stuff that yeah, has been done in the past yeah. that stuff is far more interesting to me than any game because that's something that is not you're you're probably not going to be there for like very long it's a kind of a short little experience but it lets you that to me like because the vr dream is that you go into a virtual world right mm -hmm. and so yeah. it's it's different from the outside and like that is it's losing yourself and like you put the headset on and that's it so to me if i can download a thing and be like and using like nasa's imaging data of mars from the curiosity rover mm -hmm. if i can put on the headset and walk around on mars for yeah. like 15 minutes and just look around mm -hmm. and kind of like have you know have the atmosphere and have the like the the sound design be in such a way in such a way that it feels like i am walking on mars that is 
far more exciting to me than anything else. And if, the, and if there was, yeah, like, I would agree. And if there was a good handful or more of those kinds of experiences at launch or close to launch, that would be, to me at least, and I could be alone, that would be far more. Um, that would pull me far more closer to actually wanting to buy one of these things than probably any game would. And even like one of the other things I was thinking about is like they have that 3DS game or whatever, but uh, like mm-hmm. like the Louvre in Paris, like if you could yeah. walk around like that entire thing like in VR, um, mm-hmm. you know, let's say you could be courtside at a basketball game in the middle of March. <laughs> that would be super. You know, I, yeah, like, you could uh, just imagine what sports would be like, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but and it's that thing, right? It's like here is your chance to go to a location that you probably just can't go to. Mm-hmm. Maybe you yeah. don't have the money to travel there because, you know, you just look at like earth, right. And you look at like the mount, like the crazy mountaintops and the grand Canyon and all these crazy locations on earth that like yeah. would be amazing to go visit. And like mm-hmm. that, that's a piece that's a possibility. You could do that. Yeah. You could take like imaging data. Like that, you could make that a reality in virtual reality. Right. Yeah. There is your tagline, right? There, like, there is your commercial, okay. right? Is, it's, it's, it's not, the, and, it, and you don't pitch it as like, now you don't have to leave your house. It's like, hey, maybe this isn't a feasible option for you. Maybe yeah. you can't. Maybe you don't have the hundreds, or even thousands of dollars to make a vacation trip to the Grand Canyon, or maybe you, maybe you just can't climb Mount Everest. Now you can. Yeah. Or like now you can go there and see those sites. You know, we might not colonize Mars in our lifetime. But you can still go there, you know? Like, that is far more exciting to me. Colonize. Even colonize. It's going to be a bunch That's of colonies. That's right. It's going to be a bunch of colonies. A bunch of colonies on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone make that fan art. Please. Oh, Please. man. That'd be fantastic. Uh, so, let's make some predictions. Okay. How many launch games does PlayStation VR have come October? Now, this isn't the launch window from... And this is October the day, to, the day yeah. it comes out, and we are counting the PlayStation, what's it called, VR Worlds game, yeah. the bundle. Yeah. Even though that has five games included, we're counting that as one. Yep, yeah. yeah. And specifically games. So if they have, like, the Paranormal Activity experience or the Walk experience yeah. or whatever, yeah. that doesn't count. Yeah. I'm going low here. Um, okay. And this might be high. I don't know, but like I'm going like eight. I'll go. I'll go twelve. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here our our our, our uh, if we if we want to do like a tiebreaker if if need be for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, how many experiences we'll call them? Oh man. And for um, that, I'll I'll go three on that one. I go five. Okay. Okay. Go there. Good. I can't wait to figure out wh- how far off we both are. Yes. Come October. Exactly. That's Yo. gonna do it for uh, this week's episode of Colin and Curtis in the morning. Yep. I noticed that your name is Callan down here. Colin. Colin. Like Colin. Yeah, somebody. Colin. Like you're calling someone. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna call you up and ask you, what are you playing this weekend? Uh, well, Curtis, I just answered your your phone call. Um. <laughs> hey, it's what's gonna up? be yeah hey <laughs> what's going on uh it's gonna be pretty much the same as as last week uh i got through episode four of life is strange uh replaying that i'm gonna finish that off rocket league's just that game that's just like i don't know what to play right now and i just play more rocket league uh over and over and over again rocket league rocket league rocket league uh and then uh finally more street fighter 5 uh still been Still been playing online, playing with friends. Uh, Got to, you know, still at the bronze tier level uh, mm-hmm. and ranked. So got to try and uh, lose and get pummeled some more by pro players, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but Curtain. Curtain. What are you, what are you playing, Curtain? Let's lift well, that the tr- Curtain. So, so the Trackmania beta is, like, starting today. Uh, yeah. there was a So there was a Trackmania beta this weekend. Uh, it's actually coming out next week. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the beta is coming on. I, I think it's it's up now. I've been downloading it. I, lo- I think it's just a couple gigs. So hopefully that download should be done by now. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to check it out. So I'll probably do that. 
And I bought this game called Momodora, the Re Reverie Under the Moonlight. It's on Steam. It looks kind of like a Metroidvania. Uh, it looks really, really cool. There's been other, like, this is, like, the third game in the series. It just came out a few weeks ago. Okay. So uh, it was 10 bucks on Steam. So jumping into that. Um, with that said, you can check out a Salt and Sanctuary interview with the developers of that game coming up probably on Monday. Cool. Uh, some more reviews and videos coming up throughout the week. Working on a secret project that involves arcade games on the PS4. That will be coming up sometime. I don't know. The more and more I work on it, the more and more uh, weirder and bigger that project becomes. So that'll happen sometime. All right. But other than that, I don't know, Colin. Oh, Colin, you got a video for that sheltered game. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's coming up soon. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> Shelter is a game that came out this past Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, did a short, probably about 18-minute video or so. Uh, I may have may not created the PlayStation Network Stores team. Yeah. In Sheltered. And I may or may not have a horse that features a titular PlayStation mascot. Good. Uh, but yeah, you can check that video out. Uh, YouTube.com slash PSN stores. That's, that's right, the Colin. That's the destination. For uh, that's going to do it for us once again. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you next week. Go Wichita State.